Howdy, howdy, Grokman here. Welcome to part two of my series on universal remote controls. In this series, we'll be looking at how to use the JP1 interface uh, to program universal remote controls that support that interface, as well as looking at some of the advantages of doing so. So JP1 is an interface for universal electronics remote controls. Um, it was reverse engineered by some smart guys back in around the year 2000. Um, and so you need to have a remote manufactured by Universal Electronics. And these can be sold under different kinds of brand names. Um, One for All and Radio Shack are the two main ones. And this site, HiFiRemote.com, is your main source of information on JP1. One example is uh, they have a spreadsheet which shows exactly which remotes support JP1. So in this video, in order to demonstrate the whole JP1 process, I'll be working with the URC6540, also known as the OAR USB 04G. So as I showed in part one in this series, um, the remote I'm using came with the cable already. If yours doesn't, head over to this um, hi-fi-remote.com and they can help you figure out how to get your remote all cabled up and whatnot. So I'll share this link which shows the instructions on installing the RMIR or Java version of the tool. The Java version is the one that's currently supported. So we do need to make sure we have the right version of Java. In Windows you can do that by going to start search on Java and left click Java there and open up the Java tool and click about. And you, I have version 7 you, you need to have at least version 6 for this tool. If you need to or just want to, you can click the Update tab and click Update Now to get the latest version of Java available. Now, if for some reason you go to check your Java version, you don't have anything, uh, you just go to java.com slash download and from there you can straight download the right version of Java for your OS. Okay, so we can get to the actual download of RMIR by following this link to SourceForge. Um, you can also get to it through this little tools area, which ultimately points back to SourceForge. So this is where it's at. Download from here. If you don't already have a tools folder, I recommend setting one up like C colon tools and um, have a place to put things that don't necessarily get installed. This actually will get installed, but I create a subfolder RMIR and extract it there. Then by having it in this tools folder, you have kind of a working area and there's some additional ancillary tools you can place in there as well. So the instructions are a little outdated. This section about RDFs and maps is no longer needed. Just ignore that. Okay, so now you just head over to where you extracted the files and um, you'll find this um, Visual Basic script called setup.dbs. Just run that and you should get something like this. Shortcuts created actually does an installation and create shortcuts. So clearly I'm doing this in Windows. If you're using Mac or something else, be sure to check the instructions for your OS. But from here on out, it'll be the same no matter what your OS. So fire up the RMIR. Make sure your remote is properly connected. Then you click the uh, download button to take a gander of what's already on there. It's definitely a good idea to go ahead and make a backup. Just go file, save as, and... Um, I just called it backup.rmir. So this general tab, this is where you can just configure your codes. Um, of course you can use the built-in existing codes or later we'll look at using your own codes. Um, but this shows you how you can uh, easily edit the codes. It's far easier than doing it by hand by pushing the buttons with all the rigmarole directly on the remote. 
once you're done you can just click the upload button and uh, it'll upload that image with those codes and right away you can see uh, this is a pretty big advantage of using the tool like this but of course this is just the tip of the iceberg so far okay so first I'll load up the backup from when I first uh, hooked up my remote to my computer and um, this is after I programmed it by hand, but before I used the website. Notice the Devices tab has nothing in it. Um, so I'm going to upload this to the remote. Note that there's 16,070 bytes free. I believe that's bytes. Okay, now. At the heart of this tool is this concept of device upgrades. And an upgrade in the context of this tool is basically a device dossier. Um, so for example, if you've programmed your remote by hand, um, it may not have a device dossier. It only has the setup codes program. So you can't really customize that device. In order to be able to customize the device, you need an upgrade for that device. So um it's a little bit of a confusing terminology but um, it's not really a huge deal so when you first come to the tool and if you have if you haven't used the jp1 before or the website configuration like for this one is simpleset.com um, you have this button available here to create missing upgrades and basically what that means is um the devices tab will get populated so that you can then go in and edit and customize each device exactly the way you want it. So I'm going to go ahead and create those missing upgrades now. Note the memory drop to 15,808 free. Now we can see those upgrades listed here on the devices tab. So I'll go ahead and edit the TV one just to look around and show you what it looks like here. Um, here you can see the button layout and this is you know an exact uh, picture of what the remote looks like and you can of course um, map each each button to an available function uh, and of course the uh, buttons can be set up in this table fashion and the functions can be manually set up with uh, EFC codes, device codes, sub-device codes, depending on the protocol, everything can be completely customized. Okay, so now let's say one of your existing devices isn't getting it done for you the way you want it. For example, for me, I have a DirecTV HR54. Um, you can go to the JP1 file section, device upgrades, and look for your upgrade there. So for me, I would go to the satellite area, and then just do a search on direct TV and uh, here I can see uh, there is no HR 54 listed but there's an HR 44 which is pretty close I'm gonna guess so I'll download that we can actually just let the remote master component of RMIR open it up and note but when it opens it up it's assigned to a different remote um, that's not a big deal um, when you when you add it to your device it'll automatically switch it over I'll show that here in a second You're going to want to go ahead and save it. I would save it into that tools folder you got, um, and then we'll open it up in the main component of RMIR. Since I've already downloaded it, I'll just cancel. So now back in the main component of RMIR, if you look here in the devices tab, you can see the old direct TV um, that was done by code. 
Okay, so now I'll add the new upgrade by clicking new down here at the bottom and then click open, open up the RMDU file we downloaded. Now you'll see it needs to adapt this to our remote. So pretty much it couldn't figure out how to map these functions. Um, so you'll see these in red in the button layout menu panel. It doesn't really matter anyway. We're going to customize it the way we want. So now I hit OK to finish adding the new upgrade. You get this pop up. You can either assign it to a device um, on the remote now or you could do it later. I'm going ahead and doing it now. So now we can see our new device here in slot two. The old device was moved down to slot three. Since I went ahead and assigned it to a device button on the remote, we can see in the general tab that the STB button is now mapped to that device. So in the interest of minimizing confusion, I go ahead and delete the um, old direct TV entry, which was done by key code. Now we can click edit and maybe change the device type from VCR to SAT. They may have had it VCR for some reason, I don't know, but making it SAT seemed to work fine for me. Okay, since we know we got button issues, we'll go back to edit this um, upgrade. And uh, we can map the buttons in the layout tab. You can right click a button and find the function like info. Obviously you should map to info. I guess it's case sensitive is the reason it didn't map before correctly. Um, you can also um, double click on the um, actions, the available functions there on the right. That's another way to do it. So here I'll map power to power. And how about mapping list to list? Makes sense. Now the list button on this remote is a little goofy because it does also do macro mapping, which can seem to interfere with the functionality of this button, um, depending on how long it's pressed and whatnot. So I actually end up mapping it to a color button leader just for backup. You can also click auto assign. It's pretty good. It just does a name based mapping. It's not always what you want though. All right, so just click okay and upload to the remote. So before you close out, make sure you do a save as um, to some local RMIR file just to preserve the config in case you make changes later. And also in addition to that, some of these things like these labels um, can be lost, like the description labels and whatnot. So uh, make sure you do that. So here you'll be able to see I'll download from the device. How uh, you can see how this information gets lost. Not critical to the operation of the remote, but still useful to have nevertheless. So that's pretty much the gist of the basic JP1. Um, stay tuned for part three in this series where I'll get into a little more advanced discrete and pronto code stuff, and as well as um, doing an extender, and I'll show the advantages of doing an extender. Um, but as far as the basic JP1 goes, that's how it's done. Universe, the surface of the first smoke On the wood surface afternoon Something flows through the holes in your big head Like bones, it's only scary, you're in